presented by, Do by Todd Hoffman, founder and CEO of 3S Scam. I am Marjorie Torres of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We are delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots. LabRoots is a leading scientific social networking website and producer of educational virtual events and webinars. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on the green Q&A button located in the lower left of the presentation window and type your question into the box that appears on the screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. Also, please notice that you will be viewing the presentation in the slide window. To enlarge the window, just click on the screen icon located on the lower right. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the support button at the top right of the presentation window, or use the Q&A button to let us know that you're having a problem. This presentation is educational and thus offers continuing education credits. Please click on the button in the bottom left corner and follow the process to obtain your credits. Please join me in welcoming Todd Hoffman. I will now turn the presentation over to him. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm Todd Huffman. I'm the CEO of 3Scan, and we're a computational pathology company. Those may be two words that uh, you don't hear very often and certainly not together. So first, a quick bit of background on pathology and why it's important. So pathology is uh, the practice of looking at uh, microscopic features in tissue to understand what's going on in the underlying tissue, very specifically as it relates to disease. Uh, and so in, in biology, uh, you start off as, as DNA, move to RNA, protein, cells, tissues, organs, all the way up to you. When you're looking at a whole organism, uh, you're doing radiology. When you're looking at molecules, you're doing molecular biology. But as those molecules start to form, and the, the proteins start to form into cells, tissues, and organs, this is really where you get tissue scale structures, where the microscopic detail is really key in understanding uh, what's going on in the tissue. And that and uh, from, the pathology's pr from the pathology perspective, you're using those to understand what's going on in the disease, uh, also to uh, help develop cures for the disease, and then once you have therapeutics, to help in the diagnosis. And this matters in a lot of diseases. Uh, a big one is cancer. Uh, and so to sort of illustrate some things that we think are important, uh, this is a model of the subtypes of the subclones of a tumor uh, over time. And so as the tumor grows, it evolves against itself uh, and you get different underlying genotypes uh, which translate into different tumor phenotypes. Uh, and say when you give a chemotherapy, you'll kill a lot of the cancer, but not all of it. And then what's remaining is resistant to the treatment that you gave. Uh, and so what regrows uh, are resistant clones. And so, um, uh, it's not just cancer, diseases like Alzheimer's disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, fi tissue fibrosis. These all have tissue scale structures that, that have an impact on, on the disease and so it's really important to be able to understand them. So the, the classic pathologist image uh, is someone like this, um, a pathologist who's an MD who's gone, undergone additional training in that specialty. Uh, they use their eyeballs to look through a microscope and a tissue that they're moving around with their hands. Kind of looks like the, the, the background. Um, uh, you'll see this in, in every hospital and in, in uh, every pharmaceutical company and every university lab in the United States. One issue that concerns us here at 3Scan is that the workflow hasn't really changed. So this is my favorite pathologist, Ramoni Cajal. Uh, he got his, uh, the Nobel Prize for his work in neuroscience. Um, and did really amazing work, but notice that he's sitting in the exact same position that the modern pathologist is today. And the workflow that pathologists use hasn't really changed since the 1880s. This is a problem because this, this workflow was really designed for human hands, human eyes, and a human mind, and a human-centric decision-making process with an underlying manual workflow. Uh, and so the pathologist who's shuffling around these, sec these slices of tissue on pieces of glass 
they can only go through about 350 sections in a day. The workflow is also so much more than this, than this classic image that you see. There's the, an entire front end of the process that's entirely manual as well, that's handled by technicians, where they start off with the full biopsy, and then they grossly dissect it, then they process the tissue into blocks, then you use a microtome to thinly slice the tissue, uh, mount it to glass, and then once it's on glass, you can stain it, and then finally, you hand it off to the pathologist for their decision-making process. Uh, the consequence of this manual workflow is that what the pathologist actually looks at is a very tiny fraction of the actual tissue that came out of the, the animal or the patient. Uh, so you think you're, it's on the order of like a millionth of a percent of the actual tissue. In non-biology terms, uh, one analogy that I like to use is that uh, the manual workflow is like trying to understand a movie but you're just looking at 12 randomly selected stills from the film. So here, here we've got a uh, random scene from Fight Club. You can get an idea of what's going on here uh, if you have a lot of imagination, or in the case of pathologists, uh, a lot of training uh, and a lot of hard work. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not easy. So what we're doing at 3Scan is we are redesigning the workflow um, optimizing it away from human hands, human eyes, and a human mind, and optimizing instead for the way that robots move, perceive, and think. And so here, here's an example of one component of the machine. Um, so the, the, the goal of this component uh, is to uh, cut the tissue uh, and image it uh, simultaneously. Um, which, which classically is done as, as two separate workflows. So what's right, what's right here in the diagram is a custom diamond blade. Now diamonds are the hardest material in existence, and they're also transparent, and so you can shine light through a diamond. That's why they're so pretty on rings. Um, and so what we do is we, we run fiber optics uh, down the back of this arm that holds the blade, and then we couple the fiber optics with the back of the blade, and then we shine light through the blade. And so the blade is literally glowing. Um, and then we have optics um, that we focus on the bevel of the blade. And so now we're, we're staring at the bevel of the blade and we have a camera that's on the back of the optics that we use to continually image the bevel of the blade. The tissue then goes on a robotic arm, which is then sliced across the uh, knife, um, and then the, the arm is in sync with the sensor, so that as the tissue passes over the blade, it gets digitized. Uh, and this is all done without any human hands involved in the workflow. Um, and so the, uh, we get our image uh, in a fully automated fashion without any manual handling. Uh, there, there are a number of other uh, unique components to the machine. Uh, this is a picture of it. It doesn't look anything like a conventional microscope. There's no place to put your head um, because uh, it's fully digital end-to-end. -end. Um, and, and then we also uh, are redesigning other parts of the workflow because the pathology is not just the looking at, looking at the picture. It's starting at the biopsy. And so, so we, we start with the biopsy and we're also building automation tools uh, that do a better job of automating the tissue processing and the staining. Uh, and then we also do a lot of work on the data processing side, building algorithms that do filtering, segmentation, classification, and reconstruction of the tissue. And as you'll see in a moment, uh, we also do 3D visualization and quantitative analysis of the tissue structures. By redesigning the workflow in the way that we are, uh, we're able to dramatically increase the speed. And so where a human can do 350 sections per day, each of our robots can do about 20,000 sections per day. So at this point, you probably wanna see what some of the data looks like. So I'm gonna show you next is a mouse kidney where we have stained the, the kidney uh, for blood vessels. And so what we're doing right now is we are flying through the samples uh, in black, those blobs, those are the glomeruli, which are the functional work units of the kidney. One of the things that you'll notice is that the features line up in 3D. 
In the classic pathology workflow, when you mount the tissue onto glass, it gets warped and torn, uh, which makes it impossible to really line the features up in 3D. And so in classic pathology, you're really restricted to two-dimensional examination of structures. And as you know, reality structurally is three-dimensional. Uh, now, as you might uh, imagine, this produces a lot of data. Each of the machines produces about 75 terabytes of data per day, uh, which is frankly more than a human can look at. And so instead of looking at the data in uh, two-dimensional sections, uh, we move to a three-dimensional space. And so this is that same kidney uh, where we've downsampled it in order to fit it on the screen. We're rotating it. Uh, and so at this scale, you can see the major blood vessels and those smaller flux. Uh, those are the glomeruli of the kidney. I, I wanted to show this to you so you can see that we can fit uh, a whole organ into the system. Now, mouse kidneys are pretty small, uh, but we can fit up to about 125 cubic centimeters uh, into the scope at one time. Uh, we just finished a project uh, imaging an entire macaque heart, uh, which is something that, uh, I haven't run the numbers, but if you wanted to do that level of imaging in the conventional fashion, it would basically be a career's worth of imaging, whereas for us it's a couple days on one of the, on one of the systems. Now, this is, this is heavily downsampled in order to fit it onto the screen. If we zoom in, um, this is now uh, at higher resolution. We can see microscopic features. Those are the glomeruli. And, and as you can see, we can trace those features through in 3D. If we were to show the, the whole kidney at this resolution, it would be about 35 feet tall. Uh, so even in 3D, uh, it's too much for a human to naively search through the entire space. And so um, what we have on our team is a, is a software group uh, who, who takes the 3D data and uh, cleans up the data and then segments, classifies, and reconstructs, reconstructs it. And so what you're looking at here is a small segment of that vasculature, but you're not looking at the, at the pixel intensity that came through the microscope. What you're looking at is a, uh, is a visualization of a structure that was put into a database because the algorithms trace the features through, write them to a database, and allows us to work with it in a more sophisticated fashion. For instance, in this visualization, uh, I selected this vascular segment and said, show me all of the vasculature that's connected in this segment, and then fade everything else out to 50%, which allows me to, to zero in and examine this particular 3D structure uh, with that structure highlighted. Now, uh, visualization is very useful for, uh, for uh, manually examining the tissue, but at the end of the day, uh, what we care about and what our customers care about are the decisions that are made out of the, out of the data that we produce. And so to that end, we take these 3D structures and then we design quantitative descriptions of the tissues. Uh, so here's an example of that from a paper that we're, we're working on, where we have two different regions of interest, uh, one in the cerebellum and one in the forebrain. Uh, and so we have different dimensions that we can describe the tissue on, like here is the fractional vessel volume of the tissue. This is the mean distance to the nearest uh, blood vessel in, inside, inside a face. Uh, and so we have all these statistical descriptions of the tissue. Uh, for vasculature, we have about 35 different metrics that, we, that, we've, um, that, we, that we're able to compute. And so we can use these to statistically describe uh, the differences, say, between different tissue types or the difference between healthy and diseased tissue, or in the case of a scientific study, uh, different experimental conditions versus the control. Uh, and so, so we do this regularly, and uh, we have a, a whole process uh, for, uh, from, from beginning to end for designing this, uh, this workflow. And really the goal of what we're doing is we're trying to take pathology away from being a manual, uh, two-dimensional uh, uh, practice into a high-throughput, uh, quantitative, analytical-driven science. Now we can look at more than just blood vessels. I tend to show those because most people have an intuitive sense of what blood vessels look like. Um, we can also look at, say, uh, different tumor architectures. So three, here are three different uh, tumor architectures. Uh, this is microcystic, trabecular, nested. Uh, underneath these different phenotypes, there are different, 
there are different genotypes that reflect different subclones of a tumor. Uh, so we can classify different architectures. We can also look for very sparse features. Uh, here's one example. Uh, right here is uh, the convergence of uh, two metastatic foci uh, in a tumor. Uh, and this is where the tumor is metastasizing and starting to grow down the blood vessels, or as our pathologist said, it's starting to chase the food. Um, and this is important in, in oncology because most of this tumor is not what's going to kill the patient. What's going to kill the patient is where it's metastasizing and it's now spreading through the body. In a conventional pathology workflow, you probably wouldn't have ever found this because uh, uh, this feature was 500 sections deep where in a, in, a, in a conventional pathology workflow, you typically take you know, six or 12 uh, sections out of, out of the sample. Uh, and so to find this very important but very sparse feature in the, in the manual workflow would take you, you know, almost two days. Uh, and, and for us, uh, it's trivial to get to, to that level. Uh, and it turns out that all those different features, those, those tissue architectures and that feature that we were looking for, those came out of the same tumor. Uh, and so where you started off your cutting would uh, greatly bias what you see and lead, and lead the pathologist down different directions in terms of what they think they're looking at in terms of the cancer. And so at 3Scan, we're really designing for uh, doing volumetric pathology where we can look at uh, very large uh, sections of tissue, whole biopsies, or in some cases, even whole organs, that allow us to more comprehensively characterize the tissue that we're looking at. And so here, here's that, that tumor that I just showed you. Um, and what we're doing is we're, we're sliding through, uh, tracing out some of the features. In, in, in light pink is the tissue parenchyma, in hot pink are the blood vessels, uh, and then uh, underneath that we have imagery which shows microscopic scale features uh, in, in, this, in this very large volume. Um, we do more than just cancer, though cancer is a big part of what we do. Uh, here's a quick example of that. This is a biopsy of human skin. In yellow are the peripheral nerves, the epidermis on the left and some muscle on the right. And what we're doing is we're tracing out here the, the epidermis and the peripheral nerves um, because we're building quantitative descriptions of peripheral neuropathy, which is a disease in, in, in humans, uh, it, it comes out as sort of a, a numbness in the fingers, and what's happening is there's damage that's happening to the peripheral nerves. It's a symptom of a number of diseases and also a side effect in a number of treatments like chemotherapy. And so from these 3D reconstructions, uh, we can zoom in and do very high level, uh, high detail uh, descriptions. Uh, and so here's the peripheral nerve bundle and we can split it out and map out the individual fascicles. Um, and, uh, and once something is uh, digitized and then reconstructed in 3D, uh, we can design quantitative metrics around that to further describe and characterize the tissue but doing it in a, in a statistical fashion. Uh, here's a, a project that we're working on right now uh, where we're looking at, uh, looking at lung tissue. Um, and so a, a single section in this case, this is a mouse lung, you know, it's 0.05% uh, of the sample that we pulled out uh, looking at it in 2D. Uh, and just a little quick background anatomy. Um, your lung drops down, the, the airways drop down the scales. What we're looking at down here, this, this large, large one here, is a bronchial. Uh, and then as we move through, we can see terminal bronchioles, respiratory bronchioles, and then the alveoli, which is where the gas exchange uh, happens. It's the functional work that, that, your, that your lung does. Uh, and then if we take, and then we, we zoom in on a smaller section, uh, in dark purple, we can see the pneumocytes. And then we can also pick out the, the airways. And so um, what I'm gonna show you now is a, is a reconstruction where we are segmenting out the airways, so, so these, are, these are the alveoli, we're, we're zoomed in right now, um, and as we zoom out, um, uh, we're going to drop away the, the, high level, the high level detail and start slotting in uh, big chunks of the, of the lungs. Um, and so the thing I like about this video is you can see you know, how much detail there is across that whole scale 
uh, and in diseases of the lung, um, they can be very sparse. Like when you have lung fibrosis, you know, it's not just, it's not evenly distributed across all the lung. It's, it's very spotty uh, in, diff in, in different areas. And so being able to look at a larger area uh, is very beneficial in understanding what's going on. And an update on kind of where we're at, uh, uh, we're halfway through building our new lab uh, where we'll have 12 of our systems installed. Uh, those, those are able to do about 100 million sections per year across the 12, uh, which from an output perspective, if you wanted to replicate that, it would take you about two thirds of all the labs in every hospital, university, and pharmaceutical company in the United States. Um, and um, you know, is, is that really necessary? Uh, one, one analogy that we, that we use is uh, what we're doing to microscopy, it's kind of like what CT did to x-ray. Uh, CTs are a bunch of x-rays that you take and then you build a, a three-dimensional model. Um, uh, CTs didn't, aren't a one-to-one -one replacement for an x-ray. Like if you, if you break your arm, you still just get a two-dimensional x-ray because there's no need to do the 3D. What the 3D does is it opens up new classes of applications um, uh, that, uh, that allow you to do additional things with the practice. And so one example of this is correlative imaging. In, in classic pathology, the amount that you look at is so tiny um, that if you compare it to radiology data of the same tissue, you, you have no idea where it came from inside that tissue. Uh, at 3Scan, because we can image uh, volumes that are extremely large, we can, we can segment and reconstruct features that you can see in both the radiology and the pathology. And so uh, here's that tumor that I showed you earlier with an MR that was done, uh, done previously. And so these vessels, uh, we, can, we can see in both, and then we can use that to, to uh, align and co-register the two different data sets. So if you have a radiology data set and you see some, and, and you, there's a, uh, there are features that you can't quite resolve in radiology, we can move it over into the pathology domain, look at it under our automated microscope, co-register it with, with the radiology, so you can get a side-by-side -side view at those different size scales. Uh, and so you can zoom from, from whole organ down to, uh, down to microscopic level details. Now, one, once you're, once you're at, at a, a higher resolution, you may want to see additional dimensions, um, such as you know, doing an immunohistochemical panel or pulling some tissue out for sequencing. And so we've built a system on our scopes, which allows us to capture some of the tissue and then put it into a more conventional workflow. And so uh, these are sections from that mouse kidney that I showed you earlier, where the section that was, is coming through our scope was captured and, and put onto glass. Now, once it's on glass, you can then run it down uh, conventional pipelines. Uh, and so um, here what we've done is we've taken, taken that kidney and then added a stain for cell bodies and then immuno stain for smooth muscle. So the black is the, are the original blood vessels. And, and now you can see you know, the kidney tubules uh, coming this way, and this one's cut perpendicular, um, uh, interleaving with the blood vessels. Uh, this, this allows you to get uh, a more classic uh, two-dimensional microscopic view, um, but you now, instead of just having this very, this very uh, high resolution but otherwise isolated uh, piece of imagery, you can now co-register it back into the 3D, the larger sort of whole organ level um, pathology that we do. You can co-register it to radiology, and you can also look at uh, statistical descriptions of the 3D tissue structure, uh, which in combination, this is a lot more powerful than, uh, than just regular 2D pathology. Also, once it's on glass, you can add ad additional dimensionality. So you can micro dissect the tissue and uh, run it through DNA sequencing. You can take it and do, uh, you know, look at the RNA with microarrays. You can do aminohistochemical panels or mass spec or any number of other molecular investigations uh, and bring that back and co-register it with the 3D pathology and with the radiology. And so at 3Scan, the, the way that we see the world is we see biology being a multimodal and multi-scale 
um, uh, space, investigation space. Uh, and so uh, we're mapping out um, uh, collaborations and uh, integrations with other technology with other technologies that move from the whole organism scale down to a single molecule and are doing so in a rational pipeline so that we can really take a, a good look at biology in, it, in, in its true self, which is, which is multi-scale. Uh, that's the end of the content that I prepared for today. Uh, again, my name is Todd Huffman um, from 3Scan, and if you have any questions, I would love to answer them now, uh, or uh, if we run out of time, uh, we can also answer questions uh, via email. My email is uh, todd at 3scan.com, or I believe that you can also um, uh, ask questions through this platform here. Thank you. If you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window. Type your questions into the box that appears on your screen and click on the send button. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for. Let's get started. Our first question is, how does this work? Do we send tissues or is this equipment installed at our facility? Good question. Um, right now, we run the company basically as a specialized CRO where we do uh, large-scale imaging projects for our customers who are usually pharmaceutical companies or uh, universities that are doing preclinical drug discovery research. So the, the workflow is uh, we work with the customer or the collaborator um, to develop a protocol, and then the tissue is sent over here, and we do most of the tissue prep, um, all the imaging, uh, and then the analysis. Is this a replacement for 2D slides? Uh, this isn't a one-to-one -one replacement for 2D slides because there are constraints on what sorts of things you can do with it. Uh, and the data uh, is slightly different because it's three-dimensional. Uh, one way to think about this with an analogy is it's kind of like what a CT is to a 2D x-ray. If you break your arm, and you go to the hospital and you just get a 2D x-ray because there's no reason to do a CT scan just on a simple broken arm. Uh, what this is is taking lots of images and then reconstructing things in 3D, which give you much more sophisticated 3D information. Uh, the end data ends up being uh, a bit different because it's uh, three-dimensional instead of two-dimensional, so you also change how you do the interpretation. Do you have a pathologist manually examining the imagery? Yes, yeah, so we have a pathologist on our team uh, who uh, we've trained on how to, uh, how to interpret the, the imagery, the reconstructions, and the analytics that we do. Uh, and when we send back results, uh, the top line of the report that we send back is the human pathologist's uh, opinion of what's going on with notes on uh, why they're coming to that conclusion. And we also send back, uh, in addition to the, to the, the human um, analysis, we also send uh, statistic, statistics, reconstructions, and imagery uh, that, um, uh, that our collaborators can view uh, either through a browser interface, and we have a, a web viewer for our data, or we can also send uh, raw data uh, if we're working with someone who has uh, uh, in-house image, uh, image analysis capabilities. OK. We have time for one more question. What software packages do you use to analyze the results? So uh, unfortunately, there's no off-the-shelf software that's capable of dealing with as much data as we produce. Uh, each of our machines produces about 75 terabytes of imagery per day. And we're in the process of building a lab with 12 of the machines. And so by December, we'll be producing close to a petabyte of data per day. And so um, it's too much for anything off the shelf, so we built all of our own internal software uh, that's capable of handling the data volumes that we produce. Uh, we, we do have a lot of familiarity with off-the-shelf um, packages like, uh, like Arevis uh, or ImageJ and that, that are uh, more classically used, and so we can export data in formats that uh, customers can put into uh, software packages that they already have.
I would like to once again thank Todd Hoffman for his presentation. I would also like to thank Labridge for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to let everyone know that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through August 25, 2017. You will receive an email from Labridge letting you know when this webcast will be available for replay. Please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.